Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, wanted to give a couple of early game tips for Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age. To be honest, most of this information has been on the internet for like a decade. It's not new information. But with the recent re-release, I figured it was worth putting something out that's recent. Alright, so I've got a couple of leveling gill license point tricks that I want to show you guys that are really popular early game in Final Fantasy XII. So first I want to show you what I've heard many people refer to as the Bone Zone. Basically, once you arrive in the city of Bujerba and enter the Lusu Mines, there's a bridge about four zones in that contains several dozens of respawning skeletons. Since there are so many of them, you are able to accomplish quite a few things here. For one, it is an EXP and license point farming gold mine early on. With the times 2 or especially the times 4 speed options in Zodiac Age, farming up your characters here takes no time at all. If you come back here with no guest character later on, it can be even more beneficial in terms of EXP per monster. But the more important thing is that because all of these skeletons count as the same enemy type, you can develop a chain bonus and maintain it very reliably. For those unfamiliar, a chain bonus in Final Fantasy XII occurs when you kill multiple of the same enemy type back to back to back. As the chain gets higher, it begins to come with additional benefits. It increases the drop rate of items from enemies, including the rarer items they may have, making it ideal for farming specific items. You'll want to recognize the increase through the icons used for the loot that the enemies drop, which eventually becomes a giant gold medallion. Second, the items dropped may sometimes restore HP or MP when you collect them. This makes any worries about HP or MP disappear unless the enemies are overly threatening. So when they aren't as threatening like they are in the Bone Zone, you can stay there even longer. In particular, these skeletons drop Bone Fragments, Dark Stones, and Iron Helms, among other items like Antidotes. The Bone Fragments in particular sell incredibly well. I think it's somewhere around 19 to 20k for about 99 of them, and you can get 99 of them in like 15 minutes with the 4x speed option. Any of the other items you can sell are a nice bonus too, but those Bone Fragments are really the big things you're looking out for. Just clear out the bridge of all the skeletons, then flee back two zones to the previous bridge, and then flee back to the bone zone. You need to zone two over in order to get those respawns to occur. And also, make sure to flee and not kill any enemies between the zones, as you don't want to break your chain. The chain will also break if you return to town and talk to a save crystal or a shopkeep. Return every 99 bone fragments if you can, so you don't waste the loot. So yeah, Gil, EXP, LP farm, early game, complete. Let's wrap the video up. Actually, while this is one of the more popular farms, there is also another popular farm known as the Dustia farm. Dustia is a rare spawn in the Corridor of Sand in the Dalmasca Wester Sand. It will only spawn when one of your party members has less than 10% HP, meaning you can just turn off your healing gamuts and attack one ally to get it to spawn. Once it does spawn, because it's undead, you simply use a phoenix down to instantly kill it. You can buy these fairly early on, I think the first merchant is the one outside of Nalbana Fortress in the Ester Sand. Be careful though, it does immediately cast the dark ability and it will likely kill the person who you use to bait it out quickly if you don't use a phoenix down fast enough. Now killing Dusty rewards over a thousand EXP, but that is split between three party members, so it's more like 350 a pop, and 3 LP. It's not really that big unless you did it as soon as it was possible to farm Dustia. However, being a rare spawn, it also has some decent drops. Uh, the Book of Orgain in particular is an item that it drops really frequently that can be sold for like 500 gil or so a pop. It also sometimes drops the Flame Staff, which can be a useful item early on or sold for more gil. Now normally if you wish to respawn Dusty after killing it, you do need to zone over into Rabinaster. I thought it was two zones, but Dusty had just refused to reappear when I tried to only go two zones, so I ran to Rabinaster, which isn't really that much farther. However, there is a glitch you can use to negate this requirement. Known as the Zone Out Glitch, if you exit the zone before Dusty's corpse displays the EXP and LP values, then zone back in, you can force it to respawn with the same conditions without going back to Rabinaster. Just make sure your HP is still below 10% on one character and it's an endless gold mine. You don't even have to worry about re-getting them below 10%. In the footage you'll see here, I am killing Dustia over and over again and then zoning and then zoning back in and it's an immediate respawn. However, the one time that Dustia spawns a little too far away from the zone line, I go to pick up the item just as I'm getting a chain bonus on it and you see the EXP pop up and that immediately lets you know I failed. I zone back in and as you can see, no Dustia to be found. 
This method is very popular later in the game as well, as it allows you to chain off of rare game if you can kill them near a zone line. So if there's other rare game that you end up encountering later on that you want to try this on, it works on those too, and it's pretty beneficial, more so on some of the later enemies. Might make a video in particular about the zone out glitch. Anyway, this trick is more efficient when you do it before leaving for Bujerba, especially since with that 4 times speed, it just makes kill no skeletons go so fast. If you're really quick and you are at no threat, the Flame Staff can be an excellent power boost early game for your Black Mage if you have one. And there are plenty of other grinding spots in Final Fantasy XII, including rare spawns and other types of goodies. Keep an eye out on the channel for more guides to Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age. Thanks for watching, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned, we'll do some more videos on this. Until next time, take care.